In this video, I'm going to check out the VOFO A229 Duo's firmware settings. I'm going to use the VOFO app on an Android device to connect over Wi-Fi to configure the settings. These are the ones I usually like to review and configure every time I check out a dash camera. So let's get into it. Now let's take a look at some of the firmware settings in the VFO A229 firmware that you might want to review or adjust before you use it in your vehicle. We start off with the video resolution settings. For the A229 Duo being a two-channel dash camera, front and rear cameras, you have the options of 1440p, 30 frames per second for both of those cameras. And then you can decide to drop that down to 1080p, 30 frames per second if you would like. If you only install the A229 front camera, you'll have the same resolution options, but just for that front camera. Next, let's move on to loop recording. This setting determines the maximum length of each video file for each video channel. The default value is three minutes, so each video file will typically be three minutes in length. And when the micro SD card becomes full, the loop recording setting being other than off will cause it to delete the old video files on the micro SD card to create new video files. Next, we have WDR or wide dynamic range. By default, this is off. It allows the camera to produce the best quality image when there's a wide variety of lighting conditions within the given image that's trying to record. Next, we have the G-Sensor setting. This is the amount of shock force necessary to cause the camera to lock the currently recording video file. The default value is medium, but the user manual suggests to set it to a low setting. Next, we take a look at the date stamp setting. It can be toggled on and off. The default value is on. This determines whether the date time is imprinted in the video in the lower right corner. Next, we move on to the bitrate setting. This is the bitrate for the normal mode video files generated by the camera. Keep in mind that the rear video file is recorded at only 80% of the bitrate of the front video file based on my testings of the various video bitrate settings. Now let's move on to the system settings section of the firmware settings. The first entry there is the Wi-Fi channel selection. The default entry is 2.4 gigahertz. If your iOS or Android device supports 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connections, go ahead and select 5 gigahertz. That will increase the file transfer speeds between the dash camera and your device. The next important setting to take a look at is the time zone setting. The default value being GMT plus zero. Whatever the appropriate time zone offset is for your location in the world, you need to select that here. And if you have daylight saving time transitions in your location, you need to manually adjust the setting within the camera each time that occurs. And the next setting I usually like to take a look at is the boot delay setting, the default value being off, but I usually like to adjust it to five seconds. This is a setting that will defer the power up of the dash camera until it sees constant power for that number of seconds. Now let's move on to the parking mode settings. The default value is off. So if you select a value other than off, VOFO recommends that you power the dash camera using the VOFO HK4 hardwiring kit. The first available parking mode option is auto event detection. This will record video when motion is detected by the front or the rear camera, and it will record about 15 seconds before the event and about 30 seconds after, for a total of 45 seconds. The next parking mode type is time lapse. You can choose one, two, three, five, or 10 frames per second, but this records with no audio. And the last option is low bitrate recording. It records a video file for both the front and rear cameras, and the video file includes audio. Next, we have the parking recording timer and the default value is off. This timer kicks in when the dash camera enters into parking mode and will let it remain in parking mode for the length selected in this particular setting. And once the timer expires, it will power down the dash camera. Now we have the enter parking mode timer. The default value is off and the other value is 90 seconds. This is useful when you are powering the dash camera with the HK4 hard wiring kit and you turn off the accessory power to the HK4, it will delay the entry into parking mode by 90 seconds. This 90 second window gives you the chance to exit the vehicle and close the doors to prevent any false impact or motion events from triggering a recording with the dash camera. Now we have the parking mode G-Sensor setting. This determines how sensitive the G-Sensor is to any impact or motion events while in parking mode. The values are low, medium, and high, with high being the default. Now let's take a look at the parking motion detection setting. This governs how sensitive the auto event detection parking mode is for detecting motion around the vehicle, and the values are low, medium, and high, with medium being the default. 
Using the notification sound setting, you can adjust what kind of sounds the dash camera will generate. You can turn them all off with the off setting, make it so that the button presses only beep, have the startup sound only, or generate all of them, which is the default setting. Next, we have the speed unit, be it miles per hour, which is the default, or kilometers per hour. Next, you can use the GPS info stamp to determine what appears in the recorded video with the overlay text in the lower left corner. The default value is speed plus coordinates, and you have the values of off, speed plus coordinates, speed, and coordinates only. The camera model stamp setting, which has a value of off or on with a default value of on, determines whether the camera model number is imprinted in the video, in this case, the OFO A229. Next, we have the frequency setting. This is a regional based setting. In North America, it's typically set to 60 Hertz. Elsewhere in the world, it's probably set to 50 Hertz. The default is 50 Hertz. The user manual documents this as a setting to help reduce the flickering and banding in the recorded video. The next two settings are related to the Wi-Fi identity and password information. First one being the Wi-Fi name or SSID. This is auto-generated by the firmware. And if you selected the five gigahertz Wi-Fi channel, it will prepend the 5G underscore to that auto-generated value, but you can change this value. And then the default password for the Wi-Fi connectivity is the value shown on the screen, but you can change that as well. The next two items are optional text strings that can be imprinted onto the lower status line in the video. The first one is a custom text stamp. I put my shorthand label for my company there, and then a car license number, which I have left blank in this particular example. And here are a few firmware settings that are only available through the firmware configuration menu on the A229 Duo front camera. The screensaver setting will determine how long the front camera screen will remain powered on after the camera has started recording and no buttons have been pressed on the front camera. The default value for the screensaver setting is one minute. Another firmware setting that's only available from the menu on the camera is the language selection. The default value is English. The last firmware setting that might be of importance to you that's only accessible on the front camera is the format reminder setting. You can use this to prompt you to format the micro SD card every 15, 30, or 60 days. The default value is off. I have other videos related to the VFO A229. I have them all in a video playlist. Make sure you expand the video description section and find that video playlist link and check out those other videos that show sample footage from the camera day and night. I have another video with the CPL filters installed and not installed. And then I have my unboxing and initial review video of the A229 as well. Thanks for coming to the channel and checking out the video. See you in the next one.